Reviewing the Library Databases Part 3. By now, you've spent some time looking at the library databases and you've located some potential sources. I am hoping that you have located at least one or two sources by now. So for this exercise, I want you to look at one source that you have identified. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Academic Search Complete and find one. So this is one of the databases that I didn't review in part one or part two. So I thought it'd be a good time to review them now. So go to Academic Search Complete, click on it. So that's what I'm going to do. I clicked on Academic Search Complete. I just want to show you one more potential database that you could use. So here I'm going to type in technology and communication, or maybe technology and social interaction. So keep in mind that the broader you are in the terms that you put in to the search bars, the more sources that might come up, but you might have to really weed out the ones that don't pertain to what you're talking about. So the more specific you are in the words that you put into the search bar, then the more specific titles that will pop up. So sometimes that can be advantageous, sometimes it can have its disadvantages because you might be missing something that could potentially be useful if you're too specific. So play around with a combination of words that you put into the search bar here. So here, let's say my in my um, first essay I talked about technology and its impact on our social communication. So here I'm not putting either negative or positive, I'm just being broad. So I'm going to search for potential sources. And then I'll do the same thing that I talked about in my previous videos, which is you go through the titles, um, look to see if there's any an abstract. So there might not be an abstract. If you notice here under this database, the abstracts don't come up right now. So you're just basing it on your title and the author and the type of source that it is. And here as I'm looking, I see that there's some like Sherry Turkle comes up again. So remember we talked about if you see names keep popping up, we read a article where Sherry Turkle was quoted. So we know that this is per a person that is um, does a lot of research in this area. So if you were in this field and you were writing an article, you probably would have to look at Sherry Trickle's work in order to get credibility. So if you see authors' names popping up, that might be an indication that they're big in their field. So it's someone that you might want to include in your discussion. So as I'm looking through the titles. I'm trying to see maybe something that um, could potentially be helpful to me. Um, this one seems interesting. So to bow legal where no relationship has gone before. Commentary on interpersonal relationships in the digital age. So it tells me it's an academic journal. It's published in the Journal of Social Psychology. So this is one of those articles that is very academic. So I know that its language is gonna be difficult. Um, so let me click on it and see what happens. See what pop, see what kind of information I get. So what, here in Academic Search Complete, the summary or the abstract will be given after you click on the title. So here, if I read this abstract, it gives me more information about what the article is focused on. And then here on 
the side, you'll notice I have the option of either downloading it as an HTML full text or a PDF full text, or I can just scroll down here and look at it through the database. I recommend always um, downloading it because if you do end up quoting from it or you do end up using it in your discussion, you're going to need to keep a record of it so you can include it in your works cited page. Um, a lot of times when I was new to this process, I would lose like the article that I found really useful. So I would gather all these potential sources. So I had all these windows that were open. And so instead of downloading the PDF and saving it so I could have a record of it, what I did was like I would get so caught up in trying to find as many articles as I could that I didn't take the time to save them when I needed to. So I think if you see one that could potentially be useful, just take the time to download it right away. So I would click here on PDF. It brings it up PDF, but it's still not downloaded to my computer. So I say download it so you have a record of it. And then you could just save it in your in your records and save it with a name that makes sense to you. So you could use the title that they use or you could say technology journal article. So whatever is helpful for you. And then here is my PDF version of it. For these sorts of articles, I say it is incredibly important to use active reading strategies. Look at the length of it, look at the type of article it is. I can see that it, it's packed with information, right? This is a, actually a shorter type of journal article. So a lot of journal articles, even though I said they're about 10 to 20 pages, most of them are at least 15. So 10 is on the short side. So after you read the abstract, and if it's a potential article that is worth investing time in reading, I say then give yourself sufficient time to read it. These aren't articles that you can just skim through and you'll get an idea of what they're about. If you try to approach these articles in that way, then you're going to be lost. So use those active reading strategies. Look at the title. Um, come up with a few questions that help you focus your attention on what you're about to read. So after I read this title, I would come up with two, three questions that I have. Use the tools that are provided to you. So maybe a lot of times when I get PDF articles, I use, I don't have the, the prim, premium version of Adobe. So I just have like the basic highlighting and the, the sticky note tool. So that's basically all I use. So when I look at PDFs, I highlight for myself what I think is important. And here um, I recommend insert two, two, three, questions to help you focus your attention as you read. Um, so maybe one question would be is, so is the commentary this article offers for or against um, using the use of technology for relationships. And um, how and
Maybe you don't know what interpersonal means, so that could be something that you ask as well. What is an interpersonal relation? If you find that there's a um, word in the title that you don't know, then I would say that's a pretty good time to look that up. I know we've talked about if there's words that you don't know, as you're reading, you circle them. If you have time, you can come back to them. If it keeps coming up, it might be something that you want to look up. Especially if it's in the title and you haven't even started reading, this is a good time to look it up. And so, as I looked through it before, you notice that there are no images. So, most of the time, journal articles don't have images. Some of them do have charts and tables and graphs if they're articles that are in the sciences, in mathematics, in those kind of fields. Um, then sometimes charts, tables, and graphs are included. So you could look at those and see what kind of information those images provide. So this one you'll notice that it's just straight up nine page I believe journal article um, so I, I've, I've noticed most of my journal articles that I read for my research are about 20 pages long and they take me about an hour to read so this one a seven page journal article for the pace that I read it would probably take me 30 minutes to read so just keep that in mind that it takes time to read these um, I do take notes, I highlight, so just kind of like I, how I highlighted the title, once I start reading like the intro, I try to figure out what the topic is, so I'll highlight that, um, I'll highlight a main idea, if there's a clear thesis statement, I'll highlight that. A lot of times these articles bring up questions, I'll highlight those, because I know those are questions that the writers pose so they can answer them later in their writing. Um, and then I'll highlight any important facts and statistics. So here on 509, I see these numbers and years talking about Facebook and like a percentage. So those might be statistics that are important that I might want to bring up and include in my discussion. So in addition to perhaps summarizing, each paragraph as we had been doing in class. I would say highlight facts, figures, whatever you think is important. Um, highlight any outside information that this article uses. So you have quite a bit of information that's being given and that you need to stop and think and try to understand there might be times that you didn't understand a paragraph that you read. So I suggest go back and reread it and try to see if you can pick up on the main details. Is there a way that even if you're not understanding every single sentence, can you kind of get the main idea from it and still write a summary of that paragraph, even if you're not understanding every single sentence? So those are some strategies I use to read these dense kind of articles. So give yourself some time, especially if they're longer, and use the active reading strategies that we've been talking about at the beginning of the semester, and that should help you figure out what information is useful. And I would say read with a purpose, and the purpose here is that you're trying to find a source that is giving you information that you hadn't considered and you didn't include in your discussion for your first essay. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for alternative views. So read with that purpose. And what are these sources saying that is different than what you said in your first essay? Some Another tip that I have is don't selectively read. I've noticed that, especially in my English 111 courses, students tend to just kind of pick out quotes that they think will be useful 
but I could tell that they haven't read the entire source. And I can tell because they don't sufficiently introduce the quote as we've been talking about. So the strategies that we've used when you're including a quotation sandwich or summarizing your, your source material, the suggestions was to thoroughly introduce your source, right? To give sufficient information to help you um, present the source in a way that you're being very, very specific as to what the source is saying, um, why they're important to include in your discussion, what they, what their general ideas are, and then you give like your specific quote or your summary, right? So you still want to continue doing that for this essay. So in order to do that, you have to read the entire article. So make sure that you're doing that. You're reading the entire, entire article. You're not just picking certain quotes that seem to fit what you're going to want to say in your essay. You're reading right now to help build background information for yourself and think about um, ideas that you hadn't considered for your first essay. Okay, so that's the end of these three videos for this video series. So after you've chosen your two potential source material, source, sources, what you need to do is now read them, summarize them, and then you have to post one summary to Canvas. So I would say summarize both of them, but you definitely have to summarize one in Canvas. So good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.